and how are you today? Great. Wonderful. It's good to hear that. I am so happy to be with you folks today. We're going to have some fun. I hope you don't mind to laugh. I hope you don't mind to relax because that's where I want to have you the entire day. You see on the stage up here something that's uh, sort of special to me. and We're going to talk about a little program here that, that I love to talk about. Uh, before we get into our main program, we're going to look at uh, the sixth sense. Now, you probably are trying to figure out which one's that, Dale. Well, the sixth sense is the sense of humor. And because of so much change that we're going through in society today and in our businesses today, I thought it would be a great start for our morning this morning to look at this sixth sense and take a close examination of it. Now, you've noticed on the stage up here some, some luggage, some baggage, if you will. And I think that's representative of the baggage that we carry in our life. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff that we carry around with us that affects the way we look at change. Not too many years ago, uh, there were a, a, a number of people that got together to study change and what exactly that it was doing to us. Well, I think that once that report came out, a lot of people in college probably changed their majors to cardiology, to orthodontics, because what we do is, is we allow this stress, the stress of change, to really have an effect on our bodies and to really wear ourselves out. A couple of centuries ago, when cartographers were designing the maps that we use now and we look back as uh, historical pieces. They used to write right in the margin of those maps, beyond this lies dragons. <laughs> See, I think that's what set us up to look at change as being bad. Well, what I want to offer you today is what I want you to do is to start looking at change differently. And I want you to say this, beyond this lies paradise. See, a lot different stuff. Now, I travel a lot. I get to see a fair amount of this country. My wife is an educator. I love my wife, Deborah. I've been married uh, 25 years, and uh, we just really get along because we're best of friends. But this past spring, she came to me one day and she said, you know what I'm going to do this summer while I'm off for vacation? I said, what, honey? She said, I'm going to help you in the business. <laughs> now, that's a change. And I wasn't ready for that change right off the bat and didn't really know how to sort of adjust to it. And I said, well, that's great, hon. I'd love to have your help. But that'll be wonderful. So finally, summer came. First week of, of June and school's out. No help. Didn't offer once to help. Second week came and went. No help. Third week, I'm in California and I come back off a trip and my wife meets me at the door, big smile on her face. And she said, you know, you're never going to guess what I did today. I said, what'd you do, hon? She said, I booked you. Now, this was different because she didn't have my calendar. <laughs> didn't have a clue when I was going to be anywhere else. And I said, well, honey, I, you know, you didn't call me and asked about a date. She said, well, it was a Saturday date. I know you don't do many Saturday dates. So we looked, and sure enough, I was free. She said, it's going to be at the Maxwell House in Nashville, Tennessee. It's going to be a group of 280 salespeople. I already have the contact name. You don't have to call them. going to be a gentleman to meet you outside the the hotel there and take you into the banquet where you'll be doing the luncheon presentation. And I said, what's the topic? She said, the topic's going to be service. And I said, wow, you've done really a good job. I'll just call the client and count. She said, no need to do that. We've talked several times and it's a done deal. I said, okay. Now this made me feel a little bit uncomfortable because it was quite a change for me. I'm used to talking to the client, used to kind of interacting with them and finding out exactly what it is they want. But this lady's my wife. I love her and I respect her. And I said, okay, we, we'll work it this way. I get up on Saturday morning. Now, I know from Nashville, Tennessee to Kingston, Tennessee, where I live, there's an hour's difference in time zones. So I get there. I believe in front logs as opposed to back logs. So I arrive there half hour late for my, or early for my program, which I'm supposed to be there at 1130. I get there at 11 o'clock. I look up at the front of the hotel. There's a gentleman pacing back and forth, looking at his watch very nervously. And I'm going, oh no, Deborah has forgotten the hour's difference, and I'm really late. So I scamper out of the car, grab my briefcase, get up to the front. I get about 10, foot away, 10 feet away from this guy, and he says, I hope you're Dr. Henry. 
And I said, I am. He said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. We're running a little late. Could you please come with me and I'll set you at the head table. I climb up at the head table and I'll be real honest with you folks. I hadn't had breakfast that morning. I was hungry. <laughs> now, you know how it is when you're hungry? Somebody wants to do what? Talk to you. I sat down at the head table, guy on the right of me said, Dr. Henry, what an honor and privilege to have you with us here today. Heard so much about you. Can I ask you a personal question? I said, certainly. He said, what is it that attracts you to this business? It's the people. I love people. I like to watch people's faces as I do what I do. I, I just like to, you know, give it to them. He stopped talking to me. Oh, totally stopped talking to me. Looked back at his meal, started eating. I said, well, that's a blessing. I'm hungry anyway. <laughs> I started eating. Guy on the other side of me says, Dr. Henry, I want to tell you I've read several of your articles. Now, folks, I've written quite a few articles, but you really got to look to find them. <laughs> you got to look. So I was honored with that. He said, do you really, you, you know, a, a, such a strange occupation. Do you enjoy it? I said, it's a hoot. I said, sometimes I make myself laugh. <laughs> he stops talking to me. I'm totally confused now. I'm sitting here about that time a gentleman comes from around the podium, places his hand on my shoulder. He said, Dr. Henry, I'm getting ready to introduce you. Outside of the fact that you are a well-known proctologist, what do I need to say? <laughs> did, did you say proctologist? He said, yes, indeed I did. I said, I I'm not a proctologist. He said, you're not Dr. Michael Henry. I said, no, I'm, I'm Dr. Dale Henry. Now, folks, alone, this would be funny. This would be absolutely hilarious, but as Paul Harvey loves to say, now for the rest of the story. 